Hello everybody, welcome back to my retro tat. Sorry for the delay, um, that Casio video took it out of me a little bit. I had to have a little think about what it was I wanted to record next. And I figured we'd go for something suitably beige. So <laughs> what we've got here is a circa 1970s Goblin Tease made um, in a very fetching off-white beige brushed aluminium colour scheme. Let me just get the light on there so you can really appreciate the brushedness of this. Um, right, this is a tea maker, come alarm clock, come night light. And I bought this from a car boot sale for two quid. So, I mean, you can't go to Tesco's and buy one of the very most basic kettles in there for that. So as far as I'm concerned, it was cheap. Um, we're going to plug it in and see if it works. We're going to see if the fundamentals of how it works work. And then I'm, I'm going to give it a dog score. No, uh, we're going to have a shootout between that and my daily driver, which is circa 1954 and made by our friends at Pifco. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I hope you're along for the ride. I'll explain briefly how these work. It's really not that complicated. These were invented between the late 20s and early 30s as far as this iteration of the design. Let's, uh, let's plug it in first and see if it bursts into flames because this is fresh from the boot sale. I've literally just put water in it, hence all the water damage, because I'm physically incapable of pouring water anywhere without spilling it. Oh yeah, we've even got, we've got labels. We'll, we'll have a proper look, but let's, let's get them working first and then we'll have a proper look, eh? Oh, it's a very crunchy Bakelite plug, right. Oh, I'm already seeing a little pulsing. Uh, it's almost impossible to see on the camera, no doubt, but I'm seeing a little, little pulsing pad behind that alcove there, at that cutout there. Um, so that's a good sign. It's got power. I will say it's absolutely silent, which is exactly what you'd like next to your bed. I, I can't think of anything worse than having a clock ticking away right by my ear. Okay, so <clears throat> beautiful analog clock, obviously, with the graduations. This switch, having fiddled with it when it wasn't plugged in, uh, this isn't graduated. It's it's literally there for aesthetics as far as the, the little dashes between off, light, and auto, but let's cross everything. Oh, moment of truth. Hey! Nice. Okay, that's actually a really nice amber glow. It's low wattage bulb, I would imagine. Just knocked over a load of rubbish. I'm sorry about that. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, little pygmy bulb. I say a little pygmy bulb, it's quite a big pygmy bulb. And now I can't get this back on, of course. There we go. Yeah, that's lovely, that. Um, right, I'll just twizzle this around once I finish blinding you and uh, explain how they work. Pretty simple, all mechanical, no computers, of course. This is the 70s, so they would have made a point of saying that it was computer controlled if it was. You'll notice the kettle is rocking. There's a good reason for that. So, the way these work, is this spring-loaded mechanism here that's swimming in water and therefore I'm sure is probably absolutely fine. You've got your power connection to the kettle here, which is a proprietary style plug. Lovely old, uh, I th I... it's definitely plastic, but it looks like it. the mold was probably for Bakelite originally. Uh, who knows how long this design was around for, I just happen to know this one's from the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, you set your alarm for the time you want the kettle to start boiling, uh, essentially. And as it boils, there's a basically a siphon tube here that sits real low down. As the hot water gets hot, the pressure builds and it expands. It pushes the water up a tube and dumps it out into this. This is a teapot. <laughs> 
It's a 1970s interpretation of a teapot, which I think is very cool. You pop your tea bags in there. I'm a coffee drinker, so I wouldn't do that. I'd just use that to make myself a brew, but pop your tea bags in there. This boils its water away, and then once the water has left the kettle, it's light enough that it can rock back. And I don't know if you can hear that. That big clunky switch sets off a buzzer and it should set off the light as well. <laughs> the idea being that it lights up your room gently. From memory with the Pifco one, the alarm is not the nicest sounding alarm, but back then we were still on clockwork alarm clocks with bells that went brrrr, so it's really not that much different. Um, this is just a harsh sounding buzzer, I would imagine, rather than a harsh sounding set of bells. But you never know, it might beep. This was the 70s with that crossover to digital stuff. But we've plugged it in, so let's set this all the way to auto. <clears throat> now, the one the one part of this that was missing, the reason I got it for two quid was the lady said she didn't know if all the parts were there. Oh, it's already working. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's just have a minute. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't finished introducing you. Right. Um... The one thing a lady said was that she didn't think it was complete. It is complete, apart from the thing you need to set the actual time of the clock. So we can work around that because you can trigger the alarm by the spring sound, which I'm sure you'll hear in a moment as I rotate this knob. You'll hear a clunk. There you go. Right. That's the strip. That starts the preheat. I've had to put hot water in this, not boiling water, but hot water because it's so cold down here, it's like minus four. I hope you can hear that, that's the kettle boiling. I'm just gonna try and shift you so that you can see how it works. That, that should do you nicely, actually. Okay, so what we're looking out for is for the light to come on, the buzzer to go, and the kettle to boil. These won't happen at the same time. The alarm should go off when the kettle is finished boiling and your brew is ready, because that's the most important thing in Britain. If there's tea, everything's gonna be all right. We managed the blitz, <laughs> we've managed several recessions, and the ultimate goal was tea. As long as tea's there, everything's all right. So you'll be able to watch this self-feed in a moment. There we go. Okay. You done? I'm not sure the geyser was part of the plan, but it happened nonetheless. <laughs> Okay, all right. Yep, yep. Okay. Oh. What time is it, Marjorie? I need to go to work. Um, yeah, so I'm... I think there may be a small valve missing <laughs> from the lid because it's not supposed to shoot a geyser of steaming hot water out. Um, that's not part of the wake-up regimen. But we should now have a nice pot. Yep. Yeah, that's a, there's a good amount of water in there. Apologies in advance for the contents of this. I haven't even opened it, to be honest. Oh, it's actually all right. Lovely pot of steaming hot water there. For your brewing pleasure. So mission accomplished. So that's the goblin portion of this video. Now I'm gonna set up the Pifco and do the same thing. Okay, so here's Pifco's effort. This is circa 
1954. This needs to be plugged into a different extension lead because the flex is a little too short, but it is the original flex. How lovely is that? Um, actually, weirdly, has a newer plug on it than the, than the Goblin. Um, these guys are tangled up. So this works on the exact same principle. Right, so, a couple of differences. If we turn it round, probably should have done this before I plugged it in. If we turn it round, so the Pefco item is, <laughs> it's a T-O-Matic, because <laughs> they had to name everything in that lovely Fallout universe kind of way. Pefco T-O-Matic, made in England, I didn't check that on the Goblin, actually. I will do a comparison between the two in a moment. So the the most interesting thing about this is even though it's mains powered, you need to kickstart it like a Vespa. And if memory serves, that is this knob here. You actually turn it and it goes ka -junk. Hang on. There we go. You'll notice it ticking. Here's a cool thing. Not everybody likes to have a ticking clock. Some people like a ticking clock because they're, obviously it know, they know it's working, but you can disable the tick. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love this thing to bits. We actually used it as a kettle for a really long time, but sadly the baker light in the handle has started to break down on the other side of the pot and it stinks, I'll be honest. Um, I'm not getting it yet, but when this gets wet and you touch it with your hands, it gives off this real nasty chemical smell. Um, so we retired it, uh, obviously drained it out, let it fully dry and popped it on display because it's, it is just such a lovely thing but sadly it is getting to the point now where the, the baker light is starting to break down essentially the same construction though you've got an alarm clock a kettle the alarm triggers the kettle to boil and then this one has a much more ka-chunk ka -chunk mechanism um and only once the kettle is finished boiling does the alarm go off. Now I mentioned earlier about the provision for a light. So the, the Goblin has a light. The Pifco doesn't, but the Pifco has something much more interesting, much more 50s and way more dangerous. And therefore I'm on board. Right, so. On the end here, you'll see these two brass contacts. Now what you can plug into here is anything of your choice. <laughs> so Pifco made it basically so that with a certain plug, you could plug in a lamp for a, for a light to come on when you woke up in the morning, or a radio, or anything else that you wanted that would that would not get the uh, not get the flex too hot. Basically, you could plug anything in here that you wanted to come on at the same time that your brew was ready and your alarm clock was going off, and I just think that's absolutely awesome <laughs> they were always thinking about what the user might actually want um yeah they really did have a cool way of looking at things right let's get this turned around and get it working so the one thing you will notice with the pefco is there's no receiving kettle uh teapot assembly type deal so what i've got here is a suitably mid-century shouldn't have done that sorry a suitably mid-century pot which i i genuinely use every weekend first thing in the morning when everyone's asleep and i uh have a quick go on my xbox i make a brew in this and then i've got coffees while i'm um <laughs> i've got coffees while i'm playing fallout or whatever so let's just sit this down here that's precarious but there we go that'll do staples are useful for everything now you can set the time on this but we won't bother what i'll do is i will set the alarm kyle will set the alarm there we go right so here's the pefco going for hit its run i sadly 
don't have a uh... ah I forgot one thing sorry I need to push this down to activate the alarm so this is something you'll notice the difference between the goblin and the pifco this is way more mechanical so with the the alarm mechanism pushed down nothing's going to happen you can whiz this around to your heart's content nothing's going to happen pull that up you can now trigger the alarm however you can only do it anti-clockwise because this is solely controlled. I think the goblin has got something of a, we know the pot's gonna take 10 minutes to boil and therefore it doesn't matter which way you set it kind of mechanism. Whereas this one, you absolutely have to start the alarm, which turns the kettle on and only once the kettle is finished boiling will it trigger. So let's do that now. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'll leave you to it. There we go. Thank you. We've got a pot. <laughs> we have our brew. So now for a proper look okay so the goblin first uh, here's our build sticker made in the UK also hand set you'll see that's where we've got our uh, problems <laughs> that looks like that's going to be really fiddly to to find a replacement for that's not a flathead it looks like a flat with no lobe on one side but let's break into this and see how we get on. Now this should just lift out. Not to turn this into a battered tap, but it isn't exactly in the best order. Come on, Come reveal on. your secrets. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh God. Okay, the light assembly is... Uh, that's a deal breaker as far as this thing is concerned. No problemo. Okay, sorry about that. Talk about serviceability in mind. Spade connectors everywhere and they are utterly immaculate. So if you need to change any of this, you just unscrew it, you unplug it, no more said about it. That is beautiful. Okay, there's that drive I was saying to you about. So that'll probably be fine with the correct part going through this hole here, but it's not there. And I worry that that might cause aggro. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Just, just get a load of this switch for a moment, people. <laughs> Buy one is all I'm saying. Take out a bank clone and buy one that's that well made now. You can't. Big beefy resistor there. That's that's done well. Doesn't even look like it's been stressed out. This is a fairly low mileage item, by the look of things. That's our trigger for the alarm and the light. Over here is interesting. We've got a little plunger that I presume just actuates a little strip that makes sure the receiving kettle is in place so it can't just puke water everywhere so um so i've stuck the safety switch down so here's what we've got inside i've plugged it in now obviously the kettle is no longer with us i've i've put it up up in the house to drain but i think if we make this think that there is a kettle Huh. Right, um, <laughs> oh, all right, okay, sorry. 
So yeah. Lovely simple thing, really. No, you switch over there that acts as a distributor to what functions you require at that time. Lovely electric clock mechanism. Uh, I don't think it's quartz or anything. I think it is just reference to mains. Yeah, 50 hertz. Look, if that was a US market item. Oh, I did it a favor. That sticker was coming off. Uh, if that was a US market item, that would be 60 hertz. So, yeah. All in all, extraordinarily simple. Let's also not forget that lovely Bakelite New Day plug. It's been through the ringer, as we can see. Still, that's an antique in and of itself. What a beauty. Oh, guys, the plot thickens. I was just planning on doing the uh, Pifco side of the teardown. Look who it is. It's our friends at Metamec. <laughs> Small world. Small world indeed. Lovely. Right, I'm going to have to be really ginger taking this apart because I really don't want to damage it. I'm loath to disassemble it, to be honest. Oh, I hope I can put this back together. Another beautiful, uh, another beautiful build sticker from back in the day. Alarm will not operate unless kettle is operated. Send kettle only if element fails. Haze in middle sex. Very cool. If in doubt, right first. They probably would have told you if it was possible to fix. Lovely. Okay, this is the underside of the Pefco. What a beautiful thing. A couple of apprentice marks here and there. We can forgive it for that. It has been a part in the past. I take it this... Um, I presume that's a solenoid of some sort. Um, I take it that's been a problem in the past. It looks as though it's been replaced. Oh, wow. Look at that, isn't that lovely? There's your, your nuts to hold the terminals on for the for the lamp. Right, <clears throat> this is holding the clock face on and acts as an earth, so I'm gonna just carefully take that out too. I'll be back. All right, guys, um, I'm really sorry to disappoint, but I won't be taking this apart any further. I've got a lot of sentimental value attached to this. Um, <clears throat> and sadly, it looks as though the hands are riveted to the clock. So there doesn't seem to be a lot to see in there other than a very pretty clock movement. Is it worth killing it over? Absolutely not. This thing has made it to 70 years nearly. I'm not going to be the one to destroy it through curiosity. So I'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. I think we've seen enough of the actual actuating system. Um, you can see how ka chunk ka chunk that is. It's a thing of beauty. Thankfully, there are detents here to show me where to place the clock face. So nothing's been damaged. This will go back together and get tested. Um, I'm stopping there, I'm afraid. I don't really care what you guys think of that. Uh, my folks bought me this as a Christmas present. We used it. <clears throat> it makes fantastic coffee. The temperature is just right. I, I can't risk destroying it. However, it is very nice to know that it's quite straightforward to get in behind the glass and clean it if you want to. Not that this one needs cleaning, but yeah. Okay, guys, that'll do us. 1970s Goblin Teas made, 1950s Pifco Tiamatic. I'm sorry about not completely disassembling the Pifco. I just can't bring myself to do damage to these old things. It'd be one thing if the clock mechanism had failed and we had to find out why, but for for it to have no problems at all and currently be in good work in order i don't know ripping it apart for a youtube video just seems wrong it's made it this far i can't do it to it i'm afraid i hope you understand and i hope you enjoyed thank you very much for watching my retro tat please like comment and subscribe uh, if you get a moment and it'd be great to see you again on another video also please check out the playlist at the end of these videos i try and put these in order and there's quite a lot of interesting old bits and bobs so yeah hopefully be seeing you again take care